Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. So we had uh, Money in the Bank. <laughs> it's made to fast forward through. I love these Peacock shows. God, I pay six ninety nine a month for Peacock. They gave me it, gave it to me for a dollar ninety nine for a year. I pay five bucks extra a month for the gimmick with no ads. And if you fast forward through these shows, they are amazing to watch. But then again, Brian, you didn't do that. What was that experience like? It was excruciating. Felt like this was nine hours long. 90 minutes of wrestling in a three-hour and 15-minute show. God. And she gave us 90? It was close. So, uh, men, it was actually 80. Men's Money in the Bank, <laughs> Jey Uso, Andrade, L.A. Knight, Chad Gable, Carmelo Hayes, and Drew McIntyre. They had a very good Money in the Bank ladder match. And uh, everybody was chanting for CM Punk the entire time. You know, this was one of those shows where I predicted everything virtually exactly as it went, with one notable exception, which we'll get to. And, uh, of course, Drew McIntyre ended up winning. And then later, he tried to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase, and CM Punk screwed him, so he failed in his cash-in. And uh, in doing so, they set up, obviously, Drew and CM Punk, and also Seth Rollins and CM Punk, because Punk screwed Seth, and now Seth cannot challenge for the title as long as Damian Priest is champion. Like so that. a lot of Two stuff birds. they did here, exactly what you would expect them to do. And uh, well, I didn't take the Seth sense. aspect into enough account in leading up to this thing about Punk still going to have some drama with Seth Rollins, which I think is great with how they did it because I would have figured, okay, wait until after the match, cash in then, and then have CM Punk do something, you know, or do it that way. But they didn't, and by doing that, you still have now Seth Rollins on the outside who was pissed off with CM Punk, who's pissed off with Drew McIntyre, and everybody's chasing Damian Priest. I will say, since you brought up Sean Spears making a very stupid decision, it is really stupid, in my opinion, if you are a wrestler that could wait until the bell, could wait until somebody got finished off with a move, and you can sneak up behind them and hit them in the head with a briefcase, and then they have to be pulled back to their feet. If you can do that, why would you bother going in to make it a three-way match when both guys are still, you know, Yeah, functional? that was a dumb decision. Dumb decision. That was a dumb decision. I'm sure that will play into the storyline because... Uh... I'm sure Punk will bring up what a stupid decision that was. Well, and, it is, but it also then, you couldn't do that and bastardize Seth, you know, and that's how Seth ends up getting his, you know, his role in all of this moving forward, so it worked that way. Sami Zayn pinned Braun Breaker clean in the middle of the ring. You can take Vince out of the company, but you can't take the Vince out of the company sometimes. Oh, well. This was every... A lot of wrestling Don't promoters. let this guy have too much too early. Let's see if he can handle a loss. Let's test him. Bunch of stupid crap. Hey, is that what it is or more that they have a plan for Sami Zayn and other people they want to maybe sprinkle into this mix? I get it, though. I'll say I wish Braun Breaker would have went out there and basically destroyed Sami Zayn, won the belt, and then have Sami you know, kind of go for the comeback. But I, obviously they're taking this in a different direction, it feels like, with – Sammy defending against somebody else. Okay, uh, what is the next match here? Because I'm going to need you to recap it because i gotta, I got to handle something real fast. Oh, God. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah hold right. on. What, yeah, what, are, what are we on? Uh, Damien Priest, Sammy Seth Sam Rollins. <laughs> Take <laughs> us through that. I'll be right back. Okay, go ahead. Damien Priest and Seth Rollins is now I have to go ahead and bring up notes for this thing. Um, look, the bottom line is when it comes to the match was – what we said the ending was, which was CM Punk getting involved, Damian Priest coming down to cash in in the middle of the match to make it a three-way. By making it a three-way, it also made it a no-disqualification match, which allowed CM Punk to enter in, attack Drew McIntyre, cost him the victory, leads to Damian Priest getting the pin, and Seth Rollins then outraged at cm punk because again he cost him his chance at the title too they have history with each other they had Corey graves 
hold back Seth Rollins after to go after him in the post show press conference that they did or the the post show that they did they, uh, Drew McIntyre stormed the set they needed to get Wade Barrett back and actually try to hold him back because McIntyre was going so nuts he threw a back elbow and hit Adam uh, almost said Adam Priest hit Adam Pierce in his head knocking him out which led to him uh, Drew McIntyre getting suspended uh, storyline wise so the match itself was really good because look who was involved in it it was intense people still have not tired of Drew McIntyre as a heel and booing him I thought maybe the worm would turn a little bit after Clash at the Castle that is not the case he laid out CM Punk bloodied him up at the SmackDown in Chicago, so Punk had a reason to go and get revenge on him, and that's what they went ahead and did, so I liked it. I liked how they went ahead and did it. Again, I was surprised that they involved uh, Seth Rollins, but then again, by doing that, you're always going to have that tension there with Seth Rollins and CM Punk. I just wrapped it up, boss. What you got next? Women's Money in the Bank ladder match? Mm Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about John Cena? Didn't that happen first? Yeah, we'll talk about that later. All right. So Women's Money in the Bank ladder match was won as expected by uh, Tiffany Stratton. So she'll uh, be painting that thing pink and putting a chain on it. God, these uh, bless all of these people if they're able to stand today. Talk about doing too many spots in something. There are too many spots in ladder matches. I am... Look, you guys, everybody out there can do whatever it is that they want. I will watch and be entertained by it. But with that said, I am so scared we're going to see a compound fracture or worse on one of these shows with what people do with ladders and going through them. And they're, again, doing spots with ladders where your legs are tied up in them and you can't, if you fall, you're screwed. Or like LA Knight, because we didn't talk about this, going out to the ring on that ladder bridge. If his leg went through the ladder and it fell, I, it just... Be careful, guys and girls. <laughs> you know, the story of this match is like, man, the first half was a freaking disaster. I mean, they missed spot after spot after spot after spot after spot. And then finally, Tiffany goes up to the top of the post. And I was like, oh, my God. It's not going to be good. And she hit the big senton off the post to everybody on the floor. They all caught her great. And, like, from that point forward, it actually was, like, fine. Although they did a couple spots afterwards which were way too scary. Like EO giving uh, Zoe a power slam off the top of a ladder onto a ladder bridge. That was horrifying. Dude, Zoe and Lyra were the MVPs to me for the falls that they took throughout that match on top of on top of ladders. And Chelsea's at the end was incredibly impressive when Tiffany pushed her off and she went back for back first through the two tables that were set up outside of the ring. But and that was scary as well too. If you think about her trajectory going bad, falling flat back like that up against the barricade, eh. but. I mean, Lyra, to me, Lyra and Zoe took a hell of a beating in that match. So then, uh, you know, the other the other thing is, can you believe, and this is wrestling, if you watched that ladder match and you also watched Riho versus Lady Frost on Collision, the person that broke a bone was Riho. Sometimes it's the simplest things. How? I knew it, too, as soon as it happened, because she grabbed her wrist and was talking to the ref, and I was like, this ain't good. Either Frost was not up where she needed to be, or Riho just came a little short, or maybe it was a little bit of both. Obviously, an accident, but man, sure, harm hit that floor, and yeah, you knew it. And then uh, the main event, Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, Kevin Owens versus Solo, Tama, and Fatu, Jacob Fatu. And this going on last, you know, not the not the world title match with CM Punk interfering and, you know, not the women's ladder match, not the, you know, they, they ended with this. And I thought, well, must be a new uh, Tongan showing up or some big angle. Hikaleo time. And like the big angle was, uh, you know, Jacob Fatu killed Cody Rhodes, saved Solo's life 95 times. And then put Solo on top, basically, so Cody could get pinned. 
So Solo and Cody at SummerSlam. And, uh, and everyone's, you know, Dave, everyone wants to argue this. They've done nothing with Solo. Nothing. They give him no credibility. I don't care what his interviews are. I don't care whatever. This guy, between November and today, has won two matches. Two. He beat Kevin Owens with a bunch of interference. And he won this match. In, in By the way, in this match, he took, I think, six crossroads. I mean, <laughs> he got destroyed throughout this match. And it was Jacob's job to save him time after time after time. And he did a whole job. And then he got a fluky win over Cody. And we're supposed to buy this as your main event of SummerSlam. I mean, yes. they got work to do. You cannot convince me otherwise. If you think otherwise, that's fine. I don't. I think they've done nothing for Solo. It's ridiculous. But... You're right, but they are not convincing you. They have a bunch of people out there that if you ask them, man, how has Solo Soko done this year? Man, he's been great. And if you don't ask them to name the matches that he's won, I mean, he's able to cruise off the heat of Roman Reigns and people wanting Roman back. And the whole is greater than the sum of its parts that way, where we're not thinking about a one-loss record when it comes to Solo. We're thinking about Roman coming back. We're thinking about them putting Paul Heyman through the table. We're thinking about who else is he going to bring in. So you're right. There's probably somebody out there, and there's a, more than a few people out there that maybe fall where you do. I just don't think, I just don't think that they're there yet. And I think that when it's time for solo to win some matches and they feel that way, that's going to happen. I think he's going to have to, at some point, just destroy some people on the roster. I mean, it's not that difficult. Go out there on SmackDown, have him kill some people do that. And I think if you do that, he'll be fine. But again, it just feels like they're, they're able to cruise off the story for good or bad. They're able to cruise off the story to get to Cody and solo at, at SummerSlam. And also then, it's going to be interesting to see, does Roman come back then? Do you wait on Roman coming back? You know, all all that sort of stuff. Paul Heyman, I think, is being hyped up for those uh, meet and greets that are there. So he's still being advertised for them. So if he continues to be advertised for them, I think it's going to lead to people really thinking, okay, Roman's going to be coming back here. And it'll be interesting to see if they do that because we haven't got Hikaleo in yet. We haven't got some of the other people that have been rumored to be signed. So... Still got a long way to go with this story. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.